In this video, we're going to finish building our scene. So I've gone ahead and imported in the rock assets, and for each one of these rocks, I've set the scale factor to 100, just as we did for the ground. So now, let's start to work with the rocks. So let's start with rock large, let's place this here into our scene. And so I'm going to back out here, and I'm going to go to the move tool, and I'm going to place this rock towards the back of the ground. And so what we're going to do is utilize fog for some atmospheric perspective. And so with this, with our large cliff rocks, we are going to want to place some in the background, kind of mid-ground, and then some rocks here in the foreground to vary uh, the depth here of our scene. So like I said, we're going to start with this rock large. So we'll place this guy here. Uh, let's come over to our substance, and I'm going to create a new substance material. And for the settings here, uh, let's come down to our surface type and let's set this to cliff. Now for this, I don't want to have any uh, of the dirt or the puddles. So I'm just changing uh, this parameter here to get rid of the puddles and the dirt. And uh, I guess we'll leave the striations on for now. So let's just take this material and let's just apply it here to our rock. Uh, it looks like here I was actually adjusting on the wrong substance parameters. Uh, so here I've just selected the correct material and now I'm just uh, changing the values. And we're going to want to uh, adjust our tiling here. So let's come over to the tiling section here and let's just take a look at uh, what we can do here. So maybe we want to do something like a 2x2 two two tile here. And again, I'm just going to kind of experiment with this. So maybe a 2x3. Or let's try this, a three by two. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do this, this three by two here. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of go through this process here of just taking our rocks and I'm just going to kind of kit bash them together to create an overall complex shape. So here, another thing I can do uh, while we're at it is uh, let's just go ahead and bring in our rock medium. Let's just get these guys here uh, into place. So here's rock medium. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be utilizing the same rock ground. So let's apply this. And I'm also going to grab my rock small. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do with this as well. So let's bring this in for now. And here we'll place this rock. And uh, here we'll focus in on this rock. And let's take that material that we created and let's apply it here as well. Okay, so we're going to utilize uh, these three rocks here to kind of, like I said, build up some complex shapes. So here I'm just rotating, duplicating, and scaling, and just repositioning these rock objects here, uh, basically just to build up this complex cliff region here for my scene. So here I have uh, just placed a few of these rock items together to start on this cliff and I'm back at the camera angle that I'm going to be working with. So let's come over here to the lighting tab and let's just enable fog so we can start to see how this is going to work. So here I'm going to go back to uh, these rocks and maybe just kind of bring this down a bit. I'm going to leave these guys in the background. And so here I'm just working from the angle where I want to actually render uh, the scene from. And so now I'm just, again, just rotating, uh, duplicating these different rock objects. And uh, I'm trying to also think about my depth here. So, you know, objects that are farther away are going to kind of fade off into the fog as well. And it just gives uh, a more sense of a grand scene, of a large scene. And so here I'm trying to just basically, you know, set this up, kind of layering it, you know, where I have, you know, these foreground elements, midground, and then in the very background, we have these really large, you know, mountainous region where, you know, it's, it's just really just kind of fading off into the distance.
So here I've finished the layout of the background mountain cliff range here. And I've also just made a few more adjustments here to my substance. Uh, so, you know, once I kind of see the, the entire scene kind of coming together, uh, I'll constantly go back and just make uh, a little bit more changes. So, for instance, I just dialed down the amount of puddles. So now that I have kind of my background set, what I'd like to do is start to work on my mid-range and foreground elements. And I'm going to utilize this Rock Small uh, and the Variation Rock Small 2 uh, to vary the overall height. Because even though we have our ground plane and, you know, we did introduce uh, some displacement to that, uh, everything still looks pretty flat. So what we can do is we can take these rocks and just, you know, position them at slightly elevated values above the ground with the rock substance texture to kind of help with the illusion of displacement here for this ground. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with this uh, rock small zero one. Also, I've taken all of the cliff, so all of the rocks that I duplicated, and I just placed those into uh, an empty game object group just for organizational purposes. So let's take rock small zero one and place that here into the scene. And uh, here, I'm just going to you know focus this guy here. And I am going to scale it down because uh, it's not uh, particularly small in this case. Uh, so let's come over here to our substance. And I'm going to make a new substance material. So here I'll click plus to create a new material. And uh, for this one here, uh, let's just go ahead and apply it. So uh, here's uh, rock round five. We'll apply it here. And uh, I'm just going to scroll over to my parameters. And for the puddles, we're going to take the puddles off and probably take uh, most of the uh, dirt ground. So let's just uh, change this value here as well. And so here is this rock. Uh, let me just kind of rotate it around. And uh, I'm going to tile this as well. Uh, also, make sure that I uh, adjust my height value. And here for the tiling, let's just try uh, 2. And that's going to work for me. So here you can see that, you know, we have this rock and, you know, I can adjust, you know, different sizes and things like that. So what I might do is just bring this guy. And uh, like I said before, we can, you know, position this rock at some varying distances here on the Y just to help it to kind of blend into the ground. So like in these areas here where we kind of have this seam, I might kind of rotate the rock here. Let me actually put this into a uh, global. And if we kind of look, you can see that in here. Let's just rotate it. Uh, we can use this as uh, a nice piece here to, like I said, add a little bit of extra uh, height to that ground, but also help hide the seam. So if we just kind of move this, you know, into the position where we kind of cover up some of the rocks and so on, you can see that, you know, we can get a pretty nice blend here into the ground. So that's what I'm going to do now is just kind of go through the process of just adding this rock as well as the variation to this throughout the scene for my mid-ground and my foreground. So here I've gone through the process of adding all of the foreground and mid-range rocks here. And so I utilized the Rock Small 01 for the foreground elements and Rock Small 02 for the mid-ground elements. So as you can see, this helps with the overall displacement of the ground. So we had our ground plane did have some displacement to it with, uh, you know, what we did with the sculpting inside of Maya. However, it was still pretty flat. And so by utilizing these rock assets here, you can give uh, the illusion that there's a bit more depth and variation here to the ground. And it goes a long way to adding that extra bit of detail. Here you can see that I added these pools of water. And so all this is is just a simple Unity ground plane. So I just came to Game Object, 3D Object, and just created a plane. And then I duplicated my substance. So if I come over here to my substance, underneath my materials, my substance, I just simply duplicated uh, the substance. And for the settings here, I removed the ground dirt and just took the puddles position up to a, a pretty high value and then simply just tiled this material three times. And so this gives me kind of this water pooling effect here. And here, this again just helps to add just, you know, a little more variation to the overall scene. So the final element to the scene is to add some image effects. So here on the camera, I've added uh, several image effects to help me just build up kind of this artistic rendering. Now, like I said, I'm using Unity 4.5 Beta 2. 
So I just did a right click, import package, and just utilize the effects package. I also went over to the asset store and downloaded Unity's pre-release cinematic effects. They have a good color grading and tone mapping effect that I wanted to use. So again here you can see that here with my main camera I've just added these image effects. Here you can notice that we now have anti-aliasing so early in the scene when I had to disable anti-aliasing for the HDR mode for my camera you then add that back by just utilizing the anti-aliasing image script. So underneath component, image effects, and then here you can use these image effects. So again these are all image effects that are provided by Unity. With 4.5, they have some new options here for this screen space, ambient occlusion, and, and obscurance, which is nice. Um, I disabled the global fog here on the lighting and just utilized the image effect because I was able to get just a little bit more control out of that. Here I've just enabled bloom and sun shafts here. And here for the sun shaft, for the actual direction, for the caster object, I just assigned my directional light, which then allowed me to just translate the light to adjust the sun shafts. So here at the end I added my tone mapping and like I said I just used the one from the cinematics effects pre-release and here just for my shadows I just gave it kind of a cool tone and then a little bit of a warm tone for my mid-tones and my highlights. And then finally the last effect here was just to add a little bit of a vignetting on the corners. So this is going to complete our course on working with Unity and Substance. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. And if you have any questions, please be sure to stop by the support thread. The link to the thread has been placed in the description for the videos. Also, all the project files are going to be available as well, and you can download those from the support thread or on Substance Share. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.